With less than a month to go until the fourth season of Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous, excitement is brewing for what new adventures this season will bring for our stranded campers. Taking place on Isola Nublar, the first three seasons of the show were rammed full of references, nods and easter eggs from the Jurassic Park franchise, hitting many nostalgia notes and giving fans numerous callbacks to movies and events that precede the show. Season 4 will be taking us into brand new territories and away from well-known locations, meaning the opportunities for nostalgia-based callbacks and easter eggs may be limited this time round. Before the fourth season arrives, we thought it would be a great opportunity to take a look at all of the easter eggs we have seen so far in the first three seasons of Camp Cretaceous. Season 1 Right off the bat, we have the animated Universal logo that features Pangaea before spinning to reveal the DreamWorks logo. The show opens with Darius playing a VR game, and the game is set on Isla Sauna, Site B. While the dialogue references the Isla Nublar base, the radar shows a map of Sauna, the island featured in both The Lost World and Jurassic Park 3. When Darius loses the game, we see the T-Rex eat him, which is what happens when you lose in the Jurassic Park 3 game Dino Defender. This episode shows us Darius's bedroom, which has many familiar looking dinosaur models on his bookshelf, and a book by Dr. Grant entitled The Lost World of the Dinosaurs. Darius reads this book and wins the game by using the resonating chamber of a Velociraptor, which first appeared in Jurassic Park 3. Manufactured by Billy Brennan, this 3D printed resonating chamber is used by Dr. Grant to divert the Velociraptor's attention at the end of the movie. This also indicates that Dr. Grant had written about the resonating chamber after these events. This one was a pretty unexpected callback. The helicopter that rescues Darius from the island is Jurassic 1, Simon Mazrani's private helicopter. And when Darius wins the game, Mr. DNA congratulates him on screen. Mr. DNA was first seen in Jurassic Park and later made an appearance in Jurassic World. In this episode, we also see the Mercedes AMG 6x6 and the G-Wagon, which were staff vehicles also used at Jurassic World. The electric fences in the series are based on unused concept art from Jurassic World. Also, Darius's surname Bowman could be a reference to the family in the opening scene of the Lost World Jurassic Park, and Sammy's top is clearly inspired by Dennis Nedry's Hawaiian shirt. After the ending of episode 1 where Darius and Kenji have to be rescued from the raptor paddock, the camp counsellors leave them shoveling dinosaur droppings while the others head off to the genetics lab. We see the research sign here, first seen in Jurassic World, and the sign features the same design as the ones at Jurassic Park, such as the East Dock sign. The research lab bears a striking resemblance to the command center from Jurassic World. Dr. Henry Wu is first seen here, along with the Indominus Rex blueprints. The Spinosaurus and the T-Rex can also be seen on Dr. Wu's computer screen. Dr. Wu mentions that Siberian mammoth remains are being delivered. This was previously hinted at on the Mizrani Global viral site. Brooklyn while trying to convince Dr. Wu to speak on camera, mentions John Hammond. The growth acceleration for the dinosaurs of Jurassic World is mentioned. This was in a previous draft of Jurassic World where the Indominus Rex grew quicker and larger than expected, and a label for Super Growth Formula was designed for Jurassic World by Ellen Lampel. While we don't get to see a lot of the actual park, in Episode 3 we spend nearly the entire episode with the gyrospheres from Jurassic World, and the group ends up in a situation not unlike the one that Zack and Grey end up in. Adding to the references from Darius's bedroom, he has a Mr. DNA poster hanging up on his wall. Dr. Grant is referenced here in an article that Darius shows his father on the Jurassic World forums. The forums themselves look a little bit like our own Jurassic forums. We see Mizrani arriving on his helicopter, and Roxy mentions that Zack and Grey from Jurassic World were supposed to be joining the other campers for the day. We can see a map of Isla Nublar that was used in the Jurassic World movie in the guest brochure, and Darius mentions that he was reading a new column written by Dr. Ellie Sattler. There's also a shot later in the episode that could be a reference to Ellie's run towards the bunker in Jurassic Park. The asset containment unit from Jurassic World are also referenced here, when the radio the council has left with the campers picks up their transmission. And much like in Jurassic World, we see the Indominus Rex taking down a sauropod, later followed by the Indominus camouflaging itself. It can camouflage! 
Elias imitates the sound a Brachiosaurus makes, much like Dr. Grant does in Jurassic Park. In episode 6, we see the helicopter crashing into the aviary from another angle. The hallway that Dave and Roxy are walking down resembles the corridor seen at the Innovation Center in Jurassic World. The campers enter the River Adventure, and the Parasaurs interfere with the kayaks just like they do in the real world ride at Islands of Adventure. The Parasaurs are also bioluminescent, which was first seen in the Jurassic World live tour. We also see the Mosasaurus Arena and the Hilton Isla Nublar. While escaping Toro the Carnotaurus, the gang enter the monorail, which ends up dislodging from the tracks, which could explain the monorail's position in Fallen Kingdom. Season 2 Episode 1 opens with an Ankylosaurus crossing the screen, perhaps a nod to the dinosaur's first appearance in Jurassic Park 3. There's an abandoned Jurassic World staff vehicle and a gyrosphere which could be the same one from Season 1. We then see a herd of stegosaurs walking through camp, the shot being reminiscent of the Lost World. After this, the gang hides behind a tree log which is very similar to the scene in Jurassic Park. Equally, they're hiding from a T-Rex, just like Grant, Tim and Lex were. <laughs> While back on Main Street, the gang of campers discuss the Indominus Rex versus the Tyrannosaurus Rex battle that features at the end of Jurassic World, and they speculate how it went down. We also see damage on Main Street from this fight. The kids jokingly say to Brooklyn, you only own one outfit, which isn't so much of an easter egg but more a meta nod to classic animation cliches where characters only have one set of clothes. <laughs> what? It's my signature look! The hat and sunglasses that Darius pulls out of the Lost and Found box are similar to Alan Grant's in Jurassic Park. And behind them, on the wall in the gift shop, is Lex Murphy's hat. On the floor we see a dinosaur plush toy which seems to be a little nod to Toy Story's Rex. <laughs> How you doing, Rex? Ah! Were you scared? Tell me honestly. Sammy in the tree here is a nod to Grant in the tree in Jurassic Park, and the campers are using walkie-talkies to communicate, much like the final act of Jurassic Park. In episode 2, we see dinosaurs in temporary cages, which is a nod to the Lost World. The campers also free the dinosaurs, much like Nick and Sarah do. In the third episode, the gang construct and live in a treehouse, and there's a line about how being higher is better, a vague reference to the high hide that Eddie Carr promotes in The Lost World. A high hide, you know, you go up and you hide. Hide. This could also be a nod to the unused draft of Jurassic Park 3, where Dr. Alan Grant lives in a tree on Isla Sauna to study the dinosaurs. The draft itself focused on a group of teenagers who ended up stranded on the island, but that is for another video. Let's move on. Kenji and Darius outrun and escape from a dinosaur together, a nod to them doing just that in the first season. The new coloration of this dinosaur, the Ceratosaurus, is a nod to the same species seen in Ray Harryhausen's One Million Years BC. The watering hole is similar in its look to Jurassic Park, and shows some of the same species drinking together. It also appears to be referencing this Jurassic Park 3 concept art by Jack Johnson. We see the stale cake that we saw in the first season, when the group meet Eddie. Ugh. The baryonics here act like the velociraptors in the kitchen in the first Jurassic Park, snapping at each other. <laughs> there are a few more similarities here to the scene from Jurassic Park, with Yaz, Brooklyn and Sammy hiding behind a table from the baryonics the same way Lex and Tim hide from the raptors. When chasing them, the Baryonyx also slips, similarly to how the Raptor slips when chasing Tim. And here we hear the Brachiosaurus sound from Jurassic Park. In the fourth episode, we see the Ceratosaurus return. This dinosaur was first and last seen in Jurassic Park 3. The group are also saved in a similar way to Grant when he's saved by Eric Kirby. New character Mitch is dressed in Alan Grant's outfit from the first Jurassic Park. He says, The tour guide came highly recommended, which is the same thing Udesky says about Cooper in Jurassic Park 3. Ironically, perhaps he is the mercenary who got sick and Udesky had to replace. But that one is just pure speculation. When the kids finally get to eat again thanks to the new arrivals on the island, they're eating the same way Lex and Tim did at the buffet in Jurassic Park. 
Darius mentions how compies look cute but have trace amounts of venom in their bites, with Mitch finishing off his sentence. Venom in the compies is something that has only been mentioned in the original novel. However, it's been long speculated that this was still a film trait, as it contextualizes how they were able to take down Dieter Stark so quickly. <laughs> And this one is a nod to the Brachiosaurus scene in the first film, and Darius imitates the sound of the dinosaur, much like Alan Grant does. <coughs> Episode 5 shows Ben getting thrown about by the Pteranodons, a nod to Zara's death in Jurassic World. <coughs> Bumpy licks Ben awake, the same way the Cynoceratops licks Owen awake in Fallen Kingdom. The Parasaurolophus pops its head out of the water, much like their water-loving counterparts from Jurassic Park The Ride. In episode 6, Mitch informs the kids that they got the ACU tablet from the black market, hinting that items from the Jurassic World Park were poached and sold online and in various markets. Similar to how Lowry got his classic Jurassic Park shirt from eBay. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I got it for $150, but the mint condition one goes for $300. Didn't occur to you maybe that's in poor taste? The shirt? Yeah, no, it did. I understand people died. It was terrible. In the penultimate episode, the gang of campers managed to restore power to Main Street, and this is handled similarly to the scene in Jurassic Park where Lex restores power to the main park. Kenji pushes the buttons, which show a circuit breaker designed as a homage to the one that Ellie pushes in Jurassic Park, complete with a large, flat, and gray panel, along with a green and yellow button. And in the final episode of season two, the T-Rex gets distracted by a hologram, just like the Velociraptor does in Jurassic World, when it gets distracted by a hologram of a Dilophosaurus. During the episode, the kids round up a herd of dinosaurs, which they learn how to do in season one. The gyrosphere that Brooklyn and Darius are controlling stops working, the controls being shaken much like Zack and Grey's were in Jurassic World. The gyrosphere also gets tossed around like a ball. The Baryonyx makes its way onto the boat and kills Tiff, which could be a nod to the Lost World boat disaster which saw many crew members killed before the boat arrived at the shore. As an aside, we never see this boat dock back on Isla Nublar. Perhaps it eventually makes its way to Costa Rica with those Baryonyx on board. And the end of the episode shows the gang abandoned at the docks, just like at the end of the first season. There is also a tease to the E750 hybrid dinosaur just before the credits where we hear its roar, and it sounds very similar to the Indoraptor from Fallen Kingdom. Perhaps this isn't an easter egg and more of an indication of what is now out there in the wild on Isla Nublar. Season 3 Escaping the island via a raft is from an unused early draft of the Jurassic Park 3 script. Bumpy bellowing on the shore as the boat departs is somewhat of a callback to the toasted Brachiosaurus that we see bellowing from the shore in Fallen Kingdom. On the camp meeting board we see drawings of many of their escape attempts, which are also callbacks to the following scenes. The Baryonyx head pushing out of the bunker hatch in Fallen Kingdom, Gyrosphere's Underwater, which is also from Fallen Kingdom, and the helicopter crashed in the aviary from Jurassic World. Brooklyn's roots beginning to show and Kenji's beard growing in. Yes, okay, these aren't really Easter eggs as much as they are world building continuity, but we didn't want to see any comments saying that we missed these, so here we are. Season three brings us a new previously hinted at location, the gondolas seen in Jurassic World on the park map and referenced in some extended franchise media like Lego Jurassic World, The Legend of Isla Nublar. So the Scorpius Rex kills the Jurassic Park 3 colored Ceratosaurus, perhaps explaining why the species is not known to be among those captured by Lockwood and Mills' team in Fallen Kingdom. Yaz finding the Dimorphodon eggs is similar to how Mr. Paul Kirby himself finds the raptor eggs in Jurassic Park 3. The Dimorphodons themselves are no stranger to the Jurassic franchise. While introduced to the big screen in Jurassic World, the flying reptiles were first seen in the Lost World Jurassic Park PlayStation game and they were just as irritating in that. The Dimorphodons protecting their nest and the campers escaping via hand gliders is a callback to the unused The Lost World ending where Pteranodons were defending their nest leading to a hand glider escape. Kenji kicks a Dimorphodon in the face much like Alan Grant kicked the Pteranodon in Jurassic Park 3. And the kids looking up at the torn parasail in the trees is much like the same scene in Jurassic Park 3. 
In episode 2, the campus have swimwear, which is an acknowledgement that the water park of Nublar exists, and they packed for it. But Ben is not wearing any, as in all likelihood he had no intention of actually visiting the park due to his chronic fears. The water park was originally supposed to feature in earlier seasons, and it's clear that the kids packed for it. There are claw marks on the boat, a reminder that the two baryonics murdered Tiff on it. The shot of Darius entering the bridge of the boat is similar to the security guard entering the wheelhouse of the SS Venture in The Lost World. The Uranosaurus appearing through the fog is a similar shot to how the Pteranodon is revealed in the third Jurassic Park movie. You may also remember this species fondly from Operation Genesis. As we get a good look at the Monolophosaurus, it is clear that this design was inspired by the green 2018 Mattel toy, although the Mattel toy didn't have four nostrils. Seriously, what is up with that? Is Kenji's top secret prototype handheld gaming system supposed to be a Nintendo Switch, which didn't release until 2017? The window on this door features two Monolophosaurs taking a little peek through, replicating the shot from Jurassic Park with the raptors in the kitchen. The Monolophosaur shadow on the wall is a callback to the raptor shadow on the mural in Jurassic Park. And then again, the Monolophosaurus jamming its head through the door is the same as in Jurassic Park where the raptor tries to force its way into the control room. And then for a final time, the pesky Monolophosaurus is now in the vents, a callback to Jurassic Park to Grant and Co escaping via the ventilation systems with the raptors following. A fun fact, the compies liking shiny things and collecting them in their nests is a nod to crow behaviour, which in itself is a homage to dinosaurs evolving into birds. And now the big one, the Jurassic Park ruins, the visitor's centre, finally on screen again. In this scene, Yasmina states that the founder of Jurassic Park, John Parker Hammond, died by breaking his ankle and getting eaten to death by compies, which is the death given to Hammond in the original novel. Darius says it's not true, but asks where she heard it, and she replies, I read it somewhere. And there are lots of references inside the Visitor's Center too. We see a vending machine, likely the one Hammond references when searching for Dennis Nedry, and Kenji trying to use money to use them appears to be a reference to Mr. Paul Kirby himself in Jurassic Park 3. There is a hole in the wall that the Indominus Rex used to enter the rotunda in Jurassic World. Funnily enough, the Indominus Rex also crushed the T-Rex skull while in here, so uh, that one's a little flub. This is not an Easter egg, but this is a Velociraptor back in the visitor's center, something we've not seen since the first Jurassic Park movie. Blue here eating a compie, perhaps a deep nod to the old Jurassic Park Sega Genesis games where you ate compies as the raptor to restore health. And I'm pretty sure you also did that in the Lost World PlayStation game. Clever guy, girl, she's a girl? A callback to Jurassic Park with Clever Girl, and a nod to Barry correcting Hoskins on Delta in Jurassic World. Darius inadvertently does the Pratt pose here, sparking a sense of timid recognition with Blue. Kenji tosses a coin and it bounces off her snout, much like Owen trying to feed her in Fallen Kingdom. Okay. The doorway and the stairs to the E750 area is similar to the Jurassic Park maintenance shed. Could this facility have a long history of secrets? Desktop folders feature more hybrids or non-hybrid secret animals from Dr. Wu, W600, N601, AO55. These definitely are somewhat important, as background writing is always gibberish and not written in English if it's not important to the plot. Dr. Wu confirms via video log that the Scorpius Rex, the E750, is the world's first hybrid dinosaur, which means the Indominus Rex was not the first of its kind. During the attack in Wu's video log, we see Eddie in the lab, confirming his involvement in the E750 project. So the Scorpius Rex has thermal vision, hunts from trees, and makes sounds very similar to Predator. Predator can also go invisible, while Scorpius cannot, that we know of. However, its successor, the Indominus Rex, can. The Indominus Rex also had thermal vision. This stampede looks a little like the stampede we see in Fallen Kingdom. And we get another sauropod takedown, which is sadly something that's happened a fair few times now in this franchise. Just as Darius is about to have a close encounter with Gallimimus, his radio goes off, sending the Gallimimus running. Much like the scene in The Lost World where Sarah has a close encounter with the baby Stegosaurus, electronics ultimately scare the dinosaur away. 
A green Gallimimus runs by. Not an Easter egg, but a blink and you'll miss it type detail. This green Gallimimus is a toy packaged with Darius. We see a Dilophosaurus in Darius's journal, suggesting that they have encountered the species on the island. We know they're alive and around during this time due to one being heard during Fallen Kingdom's opening sequence. Throwing the stick at the electrical fence to test the power. We all know that reference. Ben saying, bigger, louder, fierier. A bit of a callback to bigger, louder, more teeth. Pompey's fighting over food here is a little nod to Jurassic Park The Ride. The Scorpius Rex eating the parasaur and then slowly looking up at potential prey. A little callback to the Rex reveal in Jurassic Park 3. The Scorpius in the tree here showing off traits that would eventually end up in the Indoraptor. Flaming debris flies down, nearly hitting the campers, reminiscent of the volcano debris in Fallen Kingdom. Brooklyn chucking away the tin of carob, a nod to Ben's carob love in season one. <laughs> Darius and Ben have a discussion here that references parthenogenesis, a rare form of reproduction that the Scorpius Rex has evolved to do, and something we learnt that Blue is capable of in the Jurassic World VR game. Footprints leading from the car with Sammy exclaiming that they got away. It's the same discovery that Ellie and Muldoon make from the crashed explorer showing Tim and Alan's footprints. The Scorpius drool falling from above is very alien and similar to the blood dropping on Hamada in Jurassic World right before the Indominus Rex reveals itself. We see a slow motion tranquilizer dart like the one Sarah Harding fires in The Lost World. And then there's another big one. The kitchen scene from Jurassic Park is basically recreated here. The Scorpius Rex looking through the window on the door and trying to open it. And a ladle is among the kitchen gear thrown about. Could it be the one that nearly got Tim killed? Blue here jumps on the E750, the Scorpius Rex. A clear recreation and nod to the ending scene in Jurassic Park. The dinosaurs are even in the same position in the visitor center. And towards the end of the episode, Darius pulls up Ben, perhaps making up for what happened at the end of the first season. Now episode 9 brings us another easter egg and an actual timeline alignment here. Close the gate, it's the Fallen Kingdom opening scene. We have caught up to this and we are witnessing it from a new angle. This scene aligns the timeline that the Fallen Kingdom opening takes place roughly 6 months from the ending of Jurassic World, something only known from the Fallen Kingdom script. The Rex is back on Main Street, we have the Mosasaurus scene, the helicopter, it's all there. They also verbally confirm that this is six months after Jurassic World. Dr. Wu returns to Isla Nublar, something always referenced in Jurassic franchise media and known in common franchise lore, but something nonetheless we've never actually seen before. Pteranodons attacking the helicopter, a nod to the original Jurassic Park 3 ending, and also a scene in The Lost World that didn't make the cut, and this concept art shows us pteranodons, thunderstorms, and helicopters. The helicopter is stuck in the tree like the tour vehicle in Jurassic Park, and like the trailers in The Lost World hanging over the cliff. We also see this shot looking down, which is very similar to the scene in The Lost World, with debris dropping onto the wet glass. Another non-egg, but an interesting note. Dr. Wu informs Macho Man that the Scorpius Rex has scorpionfish DNA, which is how it has poisonous quills. The Indominus Rex similarly had cuttlefish DNA. Wu confirms he intends to make an improved version of the Scorpius Rex, which we know ends up being the Indoraptor, and they share many similarities. Here, Dr. Wu confirms that the character of Mills is in charge of this operation, even three years before the events of Fallen Kingdom. Two of the Baryonics from Season 2, Limbo and Chaos, make a surprise cameo here to eat a mercenary. Throughout the episode, we see Dr. Wu displaying empathy for the dinosaurs and the stranded kids and talk about his goals, as in not wanting to make monsters but wanting to make the world a better place. While not an easter egg, we believe this may be setting up Wu's character in Dominion, less of a villain and more of a genius blinded by ambition and hubris, with his worst instincts manipulated by those who employ him. Season 4 hits Netflix on December 3rd, so make sure you're subscribed to our channel as we'll be dropping content as the show releases. And of course, we will be releasing our Season 4 Easter Egg video along with our review and much more. If you like this video, then hit that like button and of course, get involved down below in the comments section. We love to read your thoughts.
Don't forget to check out the Jurassic Outpost store and check out the video description for discounts with our various partners. As always, head to JurassicOutpost.com for more news and information.